At first glance, what you're looking at right now, you guys might think that this is just the standard GNOME desktop environment with a different set of icon themes, but what we're actually taking a look at right now is a new remix that is coming out for Ubuntu, and keep in mind this is not official, but this is Ubuntu 20.04 with the uh, Unity desktop environment. And right here I have the website pulled up. Uh, this is where you guys can grab a hold of the ISO if you'd like, and there's also more information about the new release and the bug fixes and comments. So if you would like to take a look at that, as always, I'm going to provide the link in the description. So when it comes to this, this is very exciting actually. Uh, when I found out about this uh, recently, I was pretty stoked to check it out because uh, I really liked Unity back when I used it. Uh, and in, in fact, the first distro and environment that I used uh, was I believe Ubuntu 12.04 or something like that. And it was with Unity. I didn't use it for very often, but I really enjoyed using it. And um, when I came back to Linux, uh, I saw that it was using GNOME and it just, it was missing features that uh, I really miss from Unity. So we're going to take a look at um, what it has to offer and all that type of stuff. So as you can see, it has the um, typical layout that we're used to seeing, but when it comes to the shell, this is one thing that I really like about Unity and that I personally prefer um, over GNOME, for example, is that uh, when it comes to the, to the shell theme, Everything is so much more condensed and compact, and it really makes use of screen estate. Uh, I'm not using a big resolution. It's 1366 by 768. So I would prefer something more compact. Um, and right here, when you take a look at the right-click menu, we have all our options, and they're very condensed and small. And I really like that. No waste of space. Um, also, keep in mind, um, this isn't exactly a one-to-one -one experience uh, with the previous Unity, uh, but I'll show you guys how to make it look um, more like the original, because right now, if we open up uh, the file manager, for example, you can see that it has a more modern look uh, when it comes to the icon themes, uh, when it comes to the new Yaru, Yaru theme that has been presented uh, recently with the new release. Um, this isn't quite like the original, but one thing that's really cool um, is that if you maximize your window, just like with the original Unity, you can see that your um, your title bar buttons uh, to exit, maximize, minimize are here at the top left. I really like that because it really, uh, like I said, makes use of uh, screen estate and it doesn't uh, waste any of that. And when it comes to Firefox, if we do the same thing, uh, you can see that. Um, it's just the one thing that seems to be missing, and I'm not sure why. Um, I was testing this out earlier. I'm pretty sure that I saw it, um, but that is the global menu. For some reason, the global menu is missing, uh, but that would be that would basically complete everything, in my opinion, if the global menu is added. So there are some settings here. Uh, if we go to the settings, uh, what we'll be presented with are the standard uh, GNOME settings, here you have your options just like in the latest release. But really what we want to take a look at are the Unity settings. And I really like this menu. I think there's just something so unique about it. I can't quite describe it, but I really like that menu. Now, if we would like to make this a bit more, um, I guess, like the original, well, we can go and enable the ambience theme, and this gives us um, a much more reminiscent look uh, when it comes to the default uh, theme and shell. As you can see right here, we have the uh, title bar buttons and the shell and the um, launcher here to the left. <laughs> this looks very nice, um, and it's really... You know, if this becomes eventually more stable, I'm definitely going to want to uh, give it a deeper look and actually use it on my system. Uh, when it comes to the icons here, I believe that the default one, as far as I remember, these do look, uh, well, it kind of messes up the system tray icons, uh, but the icons here do definitely look uh, reminiscent of uh, what I remember. 
So let's see here. There's plenty of options. There we go. So the system tray icons look just as how I remember them. Let's try to see how the um, indicator for sound for some reason isn't working. I believe that it's most likely because I'm on a virtual machine. I don't know how to uh, change the sound using my keyboard. Um, but I'm pretty sure that looks like uh, what it looked like in the original as well. And for the cursor, honestly, I don't even remember what the default cursor was. Um, so here for the search tool, let's take a look at the settings here. Um, oh, I believe we already looked through those. So we looked through these ones. Um, for the window manager, we have a couple of settings here. Um, there's definitely a lot of options here. Oh, window snapping. So let's take a look at that. So this is how window snapping works. Um, here, let me try to, there we go. Oh, I forgot. You can't really do that with the settings. Uh, let's try with the file manager. So this is how window snapping looks. Uh, when I try to press the meta key and oops. Oh, that's pretty cool. So if you hold the meta or super key, um, it displays all the shortcuts here. So this is really cool. Very helpful. I don't know if GNOME has that. Um, I haven't tried that, uh, but this is definitely very useful here. And if I try to pr hold the meta and use the arrow keys, unfortunately, I can't snap it from uh, one of the sides to the other. But window snapping works pretty well. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we looked at the appearance settings. Uh, when it comes to the system, there are the uh, desktop settings, uh, which you can display icons, which this is very nice. If only KD Plasma had um, a more intuitive way to display, such as the home folder or the trash, trash um, for example. Um, when it comes to that, it's not as intuitive. Uh, and as you can see here, just by the click of a button, uh, you can really easily choose to display or hide uh, some of the essential icons here. For security, we have some options here, such as the desktop lock, printing, user logout and switching. And then we have some scroll options here, uh, which we have. Um, I don't see the natural uh, scrolling. Oh, this is scrolling, my bad. I was thinking of, oh wait, no, the natural settings. Um, also has to do with scrolling. Let's take a look at the um, standard settings here one more time. I mean, the good thing is, is that um, if some of these settings that don't work uh, in this Unity tweak tool don't work, uh, then what you can do is just use the standard settings here. And if we go to mouse and touchpad, uh, we have, there we go, the natural scrolling option uh, to enable. I know some people prefer that. To me, it personally doesn't make sense, but um, yeah. And one other thing is because the title bar buttons are um, right here on the left side, uh, when it comes to certain applications like the settings, it does look kind of off, but I'm pretty sure that's not that big of a deal. Now, one thing that I'm not really seeing is, uh, and let's try to search for it, global menu. Uh, it appears in the Ubuntu software, which is kind of surprising. Uh, let's take a look and see what that has to offer. Um, but that is odd. I do believe the calculator is also installed. So if we open that, this is how it looks. Um, okay, so it didn't really take me anywhere. That's fine. I'm not going to be installing anything. Let's try one more time, see if... Maybe we can open up Firefox one more time, see if that has the global menu. Um, that really does suck because um, while it's nice to have the title bar merge with the panel, uh, I think that also having a global menu as an option as well um, definitely makes the experience more complete. So let's open up maybe LibreOffice Writer. Maybe it's just a glitch with Firefox. Um, there we go. So I know that the file manager doesn't really have a global menu. 
and Firefox tends to glitch up uh, sometimes when it comes to the global menu. At least it does on uh, KDE Plasma when I have the um, global menu enabled. Sometimes it glitches up, uh, but we do have the global menu working completely fine. Let's open up a new text document. There we go. The settings work. We can go to help about LibreOffice and it's opening up just as expected. So that's pretty nice. Um, I definitely prefer having the global menu merged with the panel as well as the title bar buttons uh, because again as you can see it saves up a lot of space and uh, when it comes to the launcher here you can of course auto hide that hopefully in the next uh, release. Let's go back to the launcher try that again uh, but by the looks of it it doesn't matter which way I have the setting enabled it just doesn't want to respect the setting um, but like I said you can always take a look at the settings the gnome settings and um, perhaps let's see it was it under appearance auto hide the dock let's try this <laughs> it still doesn't want to do anything okay so I suppose if you want to use this as a daily driver you're gonna have to wait um, unfortunately there are a bunch of stuff that aren't completely working as of yet um, but that's why we're gonna have to wait a little bit um, but this definitely looks promising definitely looks very nice and um, this is if it becomes more stable I might actually just give this a chance um, these are some nice settings and we have this oh there we go the launcher is finally changing that's interesting actually when I think about it these settings right here <laughs> these settings are actually more so what I was used to seeing because again I haven't used unity in years and I think this is what they look like so let's go back is that it for the launcher launcher is there a way to hide it behavior there we go ah so it does work that is really really cool okay so if you guys want to test this out make sure that you look for these settings that I just clicked uh, because the previous ones are incomplete okay so this renders my comments about all that um, completely useless so I guess this is uh, most of the settings I'm assuming now uh, should work just fine it's just I was accessing them from the incorrect place but yeah I mean that's basically it um, everything else is basically Ubuntu as you would expect um, let's take a look at the terminal I'm surprised I haven't decided to look at that yet uh, there we go we have the global menu working just fine um, and this is very very cool Wow, I might actually install this um, and uh, you know explore it a bit more and use it a bit longer so that was basically it for this quick tour you guys can of course check it out yourselves the links gonna be in the description below let me know what you guys think uh, when it comes to unity versus gnome which desktop environment do you guys prefer and why uh, I would like to know in the comments below so uh, that was basically it for this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe and comment as well. And that was basically it. Thanks for watching.